So let's talk about custom made materials and uh, we can create a new material from this menu here also. So let's do that and uh, while we are in this custom mode, we get all these settings available for us. So we can change them manually and most of the materials in Maxwell you will build manually using this custom mode. Only time you want to use this measured data is when you really need something perfectly precise, which is in other situations where you don't need such high precision, simply an overkill. And this custom materials render faster than the materials which are from measured data. I hope that uh, makes sense. And in previous lesson, you saw that this roughness parameter greatly impacts the final look and feel of a material. This is even more true when you are using this custom material. One thing that is really important to understand is that all these settings influence each other. So first thing we will want to talk about is this uh, reflectance. For that purpose, I will change the colors because they will help me demonstrate. So I'm choosing this pink color deliberately because it will help me explain things a little bit better. And uh, as you can see here in our preview window, all we get is this reflectance zero color. So where is this pink color? It is actually in there, but we are unable to see it because this roughness is really high. So let's first explain this zero and 19 because this can be a little bit confusing. So this color, this zero color will be seen when you are looking at the object from straight ahead. So the angle of viewing at the object is zero. This reflectance 90 is the color which will appear on the edges of the object. I hope that makes sense. And let me visualize that for you by lowering this roughness because this roughness controls the mixing of those uh, colors, relatively speaking, which is not really technically correct, but uh, I'm pretty sure you will understand it easier that way. So let's lower it and you can see that pink color emerging from the side. So from 90 degree angle. Yeah, let's even lower it more. And we have even more of that pink color. Let's lower it even more. And now we have much more of that pink color. And this roughness is still controlling the smoothness of the surface. So this is one fundamental relationship you have to understand. This roughness controls the smoothness of the surface. And if it is low, the surface will be smooth and shiny. If it is high, the surface will be really dull as it is now. There is an obvious connection between this roughness and these two colors. If roughness is high, then we have more of this gray color. On the contrary, as we start to decrease the roughness, this 90 color is starting to appear from edges. So by lowering this roughness, or in other words, by smoothing the surface, I'm introducing more of this reflectance 90 color, which is not really technically correct, but uh, let's just say for the purpose of demonstration that it is. So we could also say that by lowering roughness, we are effectively lowering the angle at which this uh, reflectance 90 color will appear. So let me now do something that will probably confuse you and uh, will complicate things. But uh, at the very end of this lesson, everything will be really clear. So if our roughness is high, we get a lot of this uh, color, whatever color it is inside. So you can actually drag color from any of these guys and uh, copy it that way. So let me just switch the colors to introduce you to second concept. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, the guy changed this color to pink. That is why now this uh, 
ball is pink because roughness is high and uh, if he will tune down this roughness then more of this uh, reflectance 90 color will appear so that's really logical so uh, let's try that and see if uh, you are correct so let's lower it and um, I could say Houston we have a problem because we don't get any of this gray color appearing at all we can go all the way to zero and uh, this color is still dominant so there is definitely something fishy going on here and this doesn't mean that what i told you about this interplay of these guys is wrong in fact it is true because maxwell will mix colors so this grayish color is really mild as opposed to this pink color which is really strong and vivid and it's dominant so maxwell will always obey laws of physics and will not let you create a physically impossible material because uh, this color in the real world when mixed with this one cannot be dominant so by following the same logic if i put a color which is really strong and vivid here it should appear almost on a complete surface of this ball because roughness is low that means we want almost completely this reflectance 90 color so let's try this one because this is really strong and vivid and uh, let's see the result and as you can see we now have that green appearing on the outer edges of the ball what's even better not just that maxwell won't let you do anything that is physically impossible or incorrect it will also mix the colors i really hope you can see that uh, mixing happening here so it will mix two colors and uh, the dominant color will have more influence on the material so in our specific case if we will increase the roughness we will increase this color and those two colors will really mix uh, somewhat equally because they're let's say of a same strength and uh, intensity which is not really correct but uh, i'm really trying to simplify this and uh, once you understand this relationship you will have absolutely no problems in creating materials now there is one obvious question and uh, let's just uh, select maybe some other colors for this and uh, let's actually use the same color which will help me demonstrate another problem that you will most certainly run into let's say that you want your object not to be so darkish or metallic like and uh, that your idea is basically to create a material which has really let's say a uniform surface something like this but uh, you also want this material to have nice polished layers so how would you do that well by using all these settings here you actually can but maxwell has a specific type of component which can be added to this bsdf so if you right click on that guy you will get a pop-up menu and you can choose add coding from here so how about that there is a shiny plastic ball now here are some settings which are pretty similar to what we have in bsdf so a reduced version of bsdf and uh, by changing these colors here you are actually changing the appearance of that uh, coding and uh, let me show you a simple trick because if i disable this bsdf i will be left with just this coding okay so you can create tiny glass bubbles and uh, in fact all of these bubble presets as you can see so let's run this and choose maybe thousand rainbow two hit ok and uh, you see when you do that you can actually choose if maxwell will modify this existing material or create a new one and uh, let's go with modify and uh, as you can see one layer which is renamed to grazing you have a bsdf which is turned off and you have this coding component and uh, we'll talk about this settings this md and force free now in one of our materials bsdf 
component. So let's actually get rid of that coding because it's rather limited as it is. And I'm pretty sure even though this coding component is really good, most people prefer creating a separate layer just to have a little bit more flexibility. So in fact, let's create a new material. We will have a fresh start. We can delete this one and uh, let me show you how to create that uh, with layer technique, which is far more flexible. And uh, let's choose some happy color, maybe this uh, orangey one. And uh, when you are doing uniform surfaces, it is always a good idea that this reflectance 90 color is a slight variation of reflectance zero color. And uh, when I say variation, I mean slightly brighter. Okay, so it can be 10% or 20 or 30. It really doesn't matter. Just a derivation of this color. We can leave the roughness because we want uniformly lit surface because if we tune this down, we will get a metal ball, which is not what we want. So you can use 97, which is probably the highest value which you want to use if you want to stay in physically plausible material. And you can add another layer, which will serve as a covering. Now, obviously, if all these guys will be called layer BSDF and uh, you will have more than two than uh, navigating and finding the components of your material and making a distinction is going to be really difficult. So I suggest that you always rename your layer. So this guy contains a base. So let's uh, rename it base. So this is my color base and this guy will be coding. You can use any naming convention you like. Now let's actually disable our base layer. So we are now working exclusively with this coding. And uh, if you are wondering why would one use this layer to achieve coding, well, the answer is that coding component, let's add one, doesn't have roughness parameter built into it. So that is one of the major reasons. So by using this technique, you can have everything at your disposal. So first, coding is not rough. So you can even use zero here. So we have a shiny material. Secondly, coding in this specific case shouldn't have any color. And you instruct Maxwell, relatively speaking, for the object not to have color by setting this reflectance zero and 90 to black. So I can actually drag this transmittance, which we will talk about in following lessons. And what we have now is something that really doesn't resemble any coding, but um, we have to enable this force renal. And I think it is a good idea for me to explain what this renal is in most simplest manner. And uh, I could even use this fantastic doodle tool and uh, Let's imagine that this is a glass. So this is a typical window glass. If you are looking straight on it from, let's say, this direction, you can see right through it without problem. But uh, as soon as you shift your viewing angle and uh, effectively looking from the side, you will see a lot more of a reflection. Now, this effect is called a Fresnel effect. So that is exactly this guy here. So we are going to force that effect. Let's enable this and this is what we have. Once again, this is not a coding in any universe. Now, what do you think will happen if we enable our layer? So let's give it a shot and enable it and uh, this is what we get. Now, the only reason why this works is because this coating is in additive mode. So it will add to that base layer. But uh, as soon as you will change to normal, then it will not mix with this guy. It will not overlay that normal layer. Okay, I hope that clarifies this blending mode a bit. So in additive mode, 
it will let's simplify and say overlay itself on top of that normal layer now as you can see this highlight here is really really shiny and vivid and uh, that is not something that i find appealing and that shininess is uh, relatively speaking controlled with this and this so if i lower this guy that uh, highlight will become less apparent so somewhere roughly around 1.3 you will get just a hint of that guy now if this nd is set to 1 then nothing will happen relatively speaking once again and uh, that highlight will be gone we will talk about this nd value in our next lesson where we are going to talk about uh, transparent materials like glass and it will be much easier to understand what it does so let's just uh, leave it to 1.3 and uh, there you go you have a shiny plastic ball i can certainly understand that uh, this can be a little bit overwhelming so let's repeat what we learned in this lesson on the most simplest example so let's create a new material i will once again set those exactly the same colors I have said on the beginning of this lesson and we said that if roughness is high it will favor reflectance zero color if roughness is a low it will favor reflectance 90 color so effectively this guy controls the fall off and interaction between those two colors now what if you have a really high amount of roughness but you still want to introduce this pink color now you can override that behavior by this r2 setting as soon as i enable this watch what happens there is a slight hint of that pink on the outer edges and that is because of this 75 value so now the roughness doesn't control when this color will appear and it gave control to that r2 settings and what this 75 means is that this color will appear at 75 degree viewing angle so if i reduce this let's give it a try to let's say 60 or so it will appear already on viewing angle of 60 degrees so by controlling this guy you are effectively saying at which angle that color will begin to appear so if i lower this really low let's say maybe 10 degrees i will actually flood this reflectance zero with this pink color and uh, this second guy really controls how much uh, the roughness value will have impact on this uh, interplay of those two colors currently it's zero so now roughness has absolutely nothing to do with our transition of colors and uh, if you change this 100 here means roughness controls everything zero here means roughness doesn't control anything at all and of course by setting to 50 you can mix this and uh, achieve all sorts of uh, various materials okay i hope uh, this makes sense and uh, that you are beginning to understand how things work inside maxwell material manager okay so let's take a break and uh, we will continue in our next lesson and we will talk about transparent materials